Blender A2 is a Blender add-on that enables seamless transfer of 3D data and objects between Blender and After Effects in both directions. It comes packed with new features and we'll go through them in more detail in this video. If you haven't seen the quick start yet, check that out to see the basic workflow between Blender and After Effects. So let's work our way down from the top to the bottom. We'll start with sync layers. As you might imagine, when sync layers is on, it creates a layer in After Effects that can be overridden with new animation data. Let's use the camera as an example. I'll export the camera. And just so we can see something else, we'll uh, export the cube location and rotation and scale. All right. Now let's imagine we, we have this animation and we want to change the camera. So I'll just go into animation workspace and I'll go to this keyframe and I'll just zoom out a bit more and I'll overwrite this keyframe and we'll export that camera data again. What it actually does is it deletes the keyframes. You might have quickly seen that and then it overwrites with new keyframes. And you also notice this comment is how Blender identifies which layer is which in After Effects. So don't change or add any details to this comment. You can switch sync layers off to explore another copy. And as you'll notice, it'll create a new camera with no comment ID. Once you've created a layer with this ID, you can at any point select that layer again and re-export the data and update the data. Let's just zoom in here to show an example of that. I'll add location keyframe and we'll export that data. Oh, I forgot to switch sync layers on. So you gotta make sure sync layers is switched on when you wanna overwrite the data. All right, we can delete this layer. You'll notice also that the animation data is written to every keyframe. That's just to um, include any modifiers or other animation effectors in Blender. So this is great if you want to maintain parents and layer order. As you can see in this composition, I have lots of synchronized layers, which just allowed me to quickly update the layer properties and animation as I changed the animation in Blender. The next option is the AE Comp Center. When this is switched off, it'll use the Blender World Center. Let's just hide this object. I'll create a Suzanne monkey head at the center of the world. So the origin is at the center of the world. And we'll just export the transformation data for Suzanne. And if I go to position, you'll see that the world center is 000. We have a camera. I'll just delete the camera. So you'll notice when there's no camera, that's actually at the top left hand corner of the composition. This composition is HD 1920 by 1080. So the actual center of the After Effects composition is 960 by 540 for this HD composition. If you check the A comp center, Blender Ray will calculate that automatically. So let's export Suzanne again. Now I actually had that as a synchronized layer. So it's automatically updated the position to the center of the comp. For the next option, rotation to AE orientation, when that's checked, it'll write the keyframes to the After Effects orientation property. This does have a lot of rotation. So we'll export this cube again and I have sync layers still checked so it'll update this cube layer. And as you can see, the rotation has been written to orientation. Let's switch that off and export the data again. And this time you'll see if I click R for rotation that it's written to X, Y, Z rotation. Sometimes using orientation instead of the separate rotation can help with motion blur. There is an unfortunate mathematical challenge with gimbal lock. You won't see any problems in the viewport, but you can notice there's a jump 
here on the X and on the Z rotation. Unfortunately, that's a mathematical challenge that I'm yet to solve. The next option is include bone tails and for this I'll open up another scene. Here we've got a bone armature animation from Mixamo, a backflip. And to select the bones, I'll go into pose mode and you can select whichever, whichever bone you want. You can include the bone tails or turn it off and just choose the head. I'll just export this left up leg You'll notice that that created a new composition because the frame rate was different to my previous scene. That'll name it according to the name of the bone in Blender. Now I'll export that again, including the bone tails. It looks like it's out of position here, but that's just because I haven't included the camera animation. So I'll bring that over. And there you can see the bone, head and tail, and their rotations. The last option relates to exporting 3D objects as GLTFs, and that's GLTF scale. With that checked on, the vertex positions and face positions and objects positions will match the scale of the 3D objects. I'd recommend leaving that on any time you're going to be using GLTFs from Blender to After Effects.